Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and I welcome you to this webinar. And I think after Dr. Sharad's talk, who has explained in great details a lot of things about arthritis and lifestyle changes, uh, it is a strange uh, talk for me today because I don't know most of the audience. I can see my fellow colleagues, but Manish tells me this is an audience for the general public. And when you're giving a lecture without seeing the audience, you don't know what to say and what not to say. And being a super specialist in uh, orthopedic and spine, sometimes it's a little difficult to keep it uh, simple. Uh, however, I have tried my best to keep it simple. And I will take you through a little bit of uh, uh, thoughts on how to keep your back and neck in a good shape during this pandemic. Uh, let's look into what started it all. So. Uh, I will take you through the spread of the disease, the effects of the lockdown, the back and neck pain in the pandemic, and then I'll take you through a little bit of uh, uh, red flags and what precautions to take. I will not talk about surgery, and I will not talk about anything about uh, surgery. I would talk about rather prevention of surgery, because I think the general audience is more interested to know about prevention of surgery rather than surgery. And surgery, of course, should be done when required. But today, I'll leave it my uh, 20 minutes talk to this. It all started from this coronavirus, which, as we know, uh, spreads through droplets, and it can go large distances. So using a mask, maintaining social distancing, staying indoors. And this is how lockdown started. And this less led us to stay at home. When the lockdown started after the Janta lockdown, most of the people thought who worked in uh, hotels or travel industries or businesses thought now we are finished. So the first reaction was that there was emotion related to fear and anger and we started getting very worried and up, worked up. Even us in hospitals where we were doing very busy work, suddenly when everything is locked down, you worry. I got this slide from one of the WhatsApp messages and I thought this was a very good representation of how we have spent this next three, last three months and then we became aware of the situation and they decided to cope with the situation. And for some people who coped and for some people who grew out of coping to get benefits out of the situation is what brought them into the growth zone. So I think it's important to convert an adversity to an opportunity. And that is how we are sitting nowadays. Every other day I have to give a webinar. So we must learn a lot of things during this time and put it into practice. Having said this, I think what is the biggest effect of lockdown has happened is not on us so much as we still manage to do a lot of work online and manage to still go to hospitals. The effect has been on elderly parents and small children. My, uh, I see in my colony, I live in a colony gated colony and I see the elderly people are unable to go out for walks. They used to go to the nearby park for walks. They are unable to go out for walks. They are most afraid and ch children like us we put a ban on them for moving out of home. You can imagine the mental effect it has on them. And uh, apart from an occasional phone call, you don't, they don't get much to do and sit all day in front of the TV or rarely people read books nowadays. My parents used to read a lot of books, but I don't see elderly couples reading a lot of books nowadays. I may be wrong. And the other problem is small children. In the evening, our park is open for about an hour or so, and I can see small children dashing towards the park with small cycles with their masks on. It's so difficult on them. It's a major emotional stress on both the elderly couples and the children. And the other group which has major stress on is the working mother. With the maid having taken a flight off and the effect of lockdown is huge on them. And unless the husband steps in and helps in all this working from home, it is a big problem. And hence, everything gets topsy-turvy. So there's a loss of routine. You stay most of the day during in your night clothes. You get into a sedentary lifestyle. There's no fixed exercise pattern. Or if you suddenly become too aggressive about being fit, you exercise too much at home. So during these last two months when we are, our hospital has opened and we've started seeing cases, I see the effects of both these. And especially when I do some online consultation, I see that. Then the effect of mental and work-related stress is huge because now the boss tells you work from home, but he wants the completion of the project. He doesn't care how many hours you work. So people start, tend to work more hours rather than close their book and go home. 
and mental stress and psychosomatic disorders have a major effect on back and neck pain. And then there's this WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook and people have developed a disease of all this by looking at this three things every second. So I find some of my friends are on social media 24 seven. Even if you send them a message at 12 o'clock, they would reply back immediately. And that's disturbing and that will cause disease. Now, I think this was an important message I wanted to give for those public if there are a lot of young people or elderly people listening to this because the Rotary is involved and it has a large reach. Some facts about back pain. Every individual at least once in his lifetime will suffer from low back pain. So that's why back pain surgeons are fairly busy. The good thing about, about it, of course, is that 90% of them will recover in about three to four weeks. 90% of them will recover in three to four weeks by itself. So unfortunately, the treatment credit of back pain goes to a lot of people. It goes to homeopathy, it goes to uh, Ayurveda, it goes to a Kerala therapy somebody spoke about, it goes to acupressure, it goes to acupuncture, it goes to Sona Baba, it goes to chiropractor, it goes to everybody. But the good thing about back pain is 90% of them will be recovered in three to four weeks. Most of the treatment that is required is rest, analgesics, and physiotherapy in a proper supervised manner or when indicated is required. However, the unfortunate part about back pain is if you don't look after it, recurrence is fairly common. So learning how to prevent recurrence is probably most important. And that is what I'll focus on today. Let's understand the back because it is slightly different from joints. Joint, a large joint which Dr. Sharad spoke about is a synovial joint which has uh, mainly a single range or multiple range of movement, but spine is unique. It has, it can move in any direction and it houses the most important organ of our body, the spinal cord and the nerves. And God has created the spinal cord in a canal, bony canal, so it is protected from all directions and in the, in, in the cere cerebrospinal fluid, so it's floating in water and not touched by anything. At the same time, this bony structure is able to move in every direction. So we have, and it is very important to understand that in addition to the bony column, the muscular column, the ligaments, the joints, the balance of the spinal body is very important. So the balance of the body is very important. So in, for us, balance is everything. So human body's balance is probably the most important thing that determines your quality of life. So, and that also determines the outcome of surgery. And that is very important to understand. So I'll talk a little bit on that. The, the spine consists of the neck, which is called the cervical spine or the cervical vertebra. It's got seven vertebras. Then you have the chest or the upper back, which has the ribs attached to it. So it's a more, mainly a more rigid column. And that is called the upper back. Then you have the abdomen or the lower back, which is the lumbar spine. It has got five lumbar vertebra. And that is very, very important for your balance and core strength. Because usually as we grow old and we accumulate fat around our abdomen, the muscles become flabby. And as you would understand, a cone under pressure would take load. But a balloon under pressure will not be able to take load. And that is all about biomechanics of spine, but I'll not go into details. So in between the vertebral bodies, which is like a box, are the discs. The discs are like a tire in a tube concept. I have shown this schematic diagram, which is like the tire, and this is like a radial tire. It has got exactly about 21 to 24 layers of radial ligaments, which are attached to the bone above and below at 110 degrees. And in between is a nice nucleus jelly. That is a nice jelly, which can take the cushion and the load as we load ourselves, as we run, we jump, we take a weight and the, and the tire will take the shear, the torque, the stress and the strain. And the movements are provided by the small joints in the back, which are called the facet joints. And in between the, and the disc, uh, between the disc is the foramen. So here the nerve comes out. The nerve goes to supply the arms and the legs. And that is how we, our body's muscle functions. So this is the nerves. So this is the disc which is a jelly-like substance, and the nerves come out and supply the arms and the legs. With a period, over a period of time, 
over a period of time the disc becomes degenerate or in an acute situation it can rupture when it ruptures through the tire there is a puncture essentially and that puncture is called a disc prolapse or if there is no puncture there can be a disc bulge and the joint in the back since it's a bony canal and a bony foramen the joint in the front and back would with the disc rupture may compress the nerve and that is when you get sciatica or pain down your legs and that is important to understand that is sciatica is a symptom just like headache is a symptom so the most important thing in back and neck treatment is good posture so having a balanced upright posture is probably the most important thing for us to understand and is probably the least important thing which we pay attention to we hardly pay attention to our posture and a lot of young people you will find having poor posture with either a sway back or a flat back with a crouch and as we grow taller since our tables chairs computer desks everything is designed for 5 6 or 5 7 or 5 8 anybody who is taller or shorter will start getting postural problems and that is a very very important thing to understand now the posture and the balance is maintained by a lot of things the bony curvature the spine is not straight god has made our spine in a very good flexible manner along with natural curves so as the child grows up you get the cervical curve which is like a c shape backwards and the head is balanced on it you also imagine or i can ask you to guess the head the weight of the head is 9 to 11 kilograms the 9 kilograms from a woman and 11 kilograms for men not because women's brain is small they are bigger they are sharper and better than men but because the skull weighs more in men so uh, uh so the 10 kilograms of head is smoothly balanced over the neck so if the neck posture is deranged then you can imagine how much neck muscle strains they will go neck strain will happen and that will happen put a strain on the upper back and the upper back in the interscapular between the shoulders you will start getting paining you will start getting crouching you start doing crouching postures or change your postures and then you will get start getting back pain so the whole balance is disturbed and that is probably very important just like any tower which is long and tall has to be kept in place so this is a look like a long tower and that is to be kept in place by muscles so you have the muscles which should be having good tension so the muscle tension here and the muscle tension here should be balanced unless there is a good balance of the tension and there is a failure of muscle uh, tone then you will the the column will collapse or the column will sulk so you get kyphosis so that is why having a good muscle tone is also very very important this is an important this is a slide which most probably most of you have seen and uh, and it is important to understand that normally the head rests on the shoulder and you have a nice curvature as you creep watching your smartphone more and more and you start working you get a spinal kyphosis cervical kyphosis and the disc are under high loading and they tend to degenerate and then you start getting cervical lordosis cervical kyphosis with pain between the shoulders then you get pain down your arms and then when you use your computer or you bring your neck forward too much while working on the computer in poor posture you start getting arm pain and you get chronic pain or chronic fatigue syndrome or it is called fibromyalgia which is very difficult to treat and you then go all over the world trying all signs of treatment to get yourself treated the other very important thing as i see some elderly rotarians are also in this uh, audience is to understand that we humans live in a cone of balance the cone of balance was described by professor dubosay from france and the cone of balance is a very important thing the cone of balance says that as we grow older our bones become smaller and we lose height as you can see and we get a kyphosis so we tilt forwards the normal balance is if you draw a plumb line from the ear it will fall on the ankle so that is normal balance so that balance means that the neck is in balance the chest is in balance the lumbar spine is balanced the pelvis and the hip are in balance the knee is in balance and the ankle is balanced the center of the c2 which is our axis vertebra falls on the center of the ankle and that's good balance as we as we grow older are we shift forwards that is called a positive sagittal balance and that is also very important to understand and i think dr sharad was speaking about muscle weakness so muscle weakness bone weakness 
and balance are probably the three most important things that people must be careful about because these are these have to be prevented from happening so bone weakness is called osteoporosis and it can be easily treated and it's a medical condition it should be diagnosed and treated and you should not wait for spinal fractures every month i operate about two or three spine fractures because of weakness and then they lead to it leads to paralysis sometimes muscle weakness is called sarcopenia and sarcopenia is very very difficult to treat so if you have small thin muscles and you have nothing but skin and bones the muscles will not be able to hold your posture so you will get fatigue you will always need a rest you will always need a support so your mobility your agility your st strength will be lost so muscle tone bone strength and agility and mobility has to be maintained right from early li early life right from 20s to 40s as soon as you are aware that it is so important for your future life it is important that you should look after it because old age is more difficult than young age and there is no question about it and unless you are aware and careful about it you can't rectify it surgeons can't rectify it we can fix up your spine make it straight but still it will never be normal so what god has given is probably best to be preserved that is about some biomechanics of and some anatomy of spine i will talk a little bit on what are the factors of back pain and we get a lot of variety of patients for back pain the biggest cause one of the biggest factors is stress depression anxiety so if you have stress depression anxiety you will get back pain neck pain fatigue headache tiredness insomnia and all sorts of things so though mechanical cause of back pain is common which can be easily corrected and as you grow old you can get degenerative causes of back pain or if you get a trauma if you fall as you become elderly if you have a fall in the bathroom you can easily break your bone or if you have disease and that is not something i'm going to touch about because if you get infection if you get tuberculosis if you get a tumor if you get uh, any of such things then that is a bad news and that you must see a doctor as soon as that happens and uh, you can also get a referred pain from anywhere in the chest or from the abdomen so back pain should not be treated by anybody other than a doctor if it is it is persistent for more than 3 or 4 weeks so we have something called red flags which i'll talk to you about also some people are more prone so genes also responsible for back pain now since india is a free country and everybody is free to choose whatever treatment he or she desires if you get back pain everybody doesn't go to a hospital everybody doesn't go to a doctor so the treatment is also dependent on to where he goes to so if he goes to the sona baba he get or bone setter he gets a manipulation if he goes to the acupuncture or the acupuncturist he gets the acupuncture if he goes to a physiotherapist with the hi fi gadgets he gets a spinal decompression or if he goes to a physician he gets some medicines if he goes so it is that also determines the outcome of a lot of things so essentially a good healthy care of back is probably having a proper assessment proper training and then the right treatment and that's also very important so it is important not to do that and nowadays i find everybody gets treated by google so google doctor treats everything he advises you everything from care to diet to prevention to exercise to surgery also so the other day a patient told told me three different types of surgery for the back and he says which surgery you are going to do and how are you going to do it i said how do you know so much about it he says i have learned it all from google so i asked him is also i told him there is also in the google available how to make a plane and then fly it why don't you do that and then he kept quiet so it is very important that you should not take everything from google and if you take the medicines or the list or everything side effects you will never be able to understand all this because it's taken so many years for us to understand all this and still we don't understand a lot a lot of it are, i'm afraid to say so for a common man just looking up google is not good enough so look at google with caution this is the scientific chart of causes of low back pain and i want you to even want the general audience to go through this a little bit a mechanical cause of back pain in the first line is the nine, is 97% cause of back pain so most of the back pain gets better and that is due to lumbar strain or a disc prolapse or a facet disease or osteoporotic compression fracture or lumbar canal stenosis as we grow older and the disc height decreases the spinal column becomes narrower 
and the nerves have less space to come. So when we walk, there is engorgement of veins and there is something called claudication, in which means our legs become numb. We have difficulty in walking. We fall forwards. We have frequent falls. And these are important things to be recognized. Or if you have bony deformities where you the bone slips over another bone and that has to be treated surgically, there is no other option. Then there are non-mechanical causes which are important and not should be treated. That is cancer or uh, inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis or infection. And then they are referred, which I spoke about, prostrate, pe uterus, pelvic inflammatory diseases, kidney diseases, blood vessel problems or GI pro problems. So these can also, herpes can all this cause back pain and present as back pain. So these, these have to be identified by the doctor. So you should not ignore back pain. So when should you go to the doctor? So there are red flags we always tell our patients. If you have constant or unremitting back pain, if you have pain which is not related to movement or posture, so suppose you have pain at every, even if you lie down and the pain is unremitting and bad, that means it is not related to your posture or not related to mechanics. Or if you have fever, weight loss, constitutional symptoms, other things along with this, if you have numbness, or weakness or your th leg becomes thin or you're not able to move your leg or bowel, bladder symptoms, which you say cauda equina, or if there's obvious deformity, which you can see like a knuckle or a gibbous, gibbous in the back, or you have severe pain, then you should see an orthopedic surgeon instantly. As I already said, renal stones, pelvic diseases, GI ulcers, autoimmune can also cause back pain and they should be differentiated. The commonest cause, as I said, is bad posture and and that is mechanical cause. So muscles, nerves, bones, discs are in harmony in the back. And keeping them in alignment in good posture is probably the most important thing and nothing I, more I can emphasize on. So you should always walk as if God is lifting you from the sky. So if I tell my patients, you always walk looking up so as if God is lifting you. Don't look down and walk, look forwards, have a good gaze. Those who are elderly have problems, use a stick or use a walker, then they, they, have, they obviously have lost their uh, forward gaze so they can, they can walk carefully. But young people should always walk with the right posture. And that is important. As I said earlier, from the ear lobe to the ankle is a straight line and the spine is not a straight line. So the center of gravity falls very carefully along the spine and that balance when disturbed causes back pain. So the right techniques, these are some right techniques. You should not be carrying a heavy bag on one side because then you will always be leaning to that side and you will strain your muscles on this side and you develop, just like a car which is loaded or a truck which is loaded heavily on one side will we go out of alignment. So that's also important. So these are tips which are found in the net all over the place and you must know how to lift, how to step, pick up your child and all these things. This is also very important. Since most of us are send, spending time in front of the computers, especially during this pandemic, it is very, very important that you must get the right posture. You must have good lighting. You must have a right table chair. The height must be normal. You, you must be looking forwards. Your elbow should be rested like uh, my elbow is rested and your head should be upright. And your back should have a back rest because the normal curvature of the back is a lordosis curvature, which is bent forwards. And that is important. So this is very, very important. Your feet should be slightly elevated so that your knee and the hip are in a straight line. Otherwise, you can get a knee and a hip strain. Nobody else has shown how beautiful his health is in spite of his hard work and how he works on yoga and and that gives him the confidence and the and his, uh, he, I, I'm told that he work, gets up at four o'clock in the morning and does yoga and pranam for one hour. Nothing is more important than that. And this is all from our Indian science. So once you have a good posture, once you have a good health, you will have confidence. And that confidence will allow you to really work long. So I, I tell a lot of my uh, friends or whose children are abroad that you can live abroad only if you are healthy. The moment you get, become sick, you will need comfort and uh, home. So if you want to work hard and live long and be healthy, you have to look at all the diet, the, diet, the posture and everything. Because they're working on computers for eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, and they're doing night shifts. So that is very important to understand. So these postures have to be avoided. And invariably, I see a lot of uh, 
children, a lot of young adults are slouching on the sofa, slouching on the bed, sitting uh, inclined and using all these postures. They are bound to get problems. This is, as you uh, say that, you call, calling for trouble. Now there are some easy modifications you can do, even if you don't have a proper high expensive chair, you can use a backrest, you can fold a towel, you can put your feet up, you can elevate your pillow on books. I've elevated my pillow on books, uh, elevated my computer on, the, on a book. And I wanted to spend one more minute on the effect of poor posture on the neck. So once you look forward all the time on your, on your iPad or on the smartphone, you get neck strain and that gives you headache, eye strain and you start getting breathing and digestive problems and you get intrascapular pain and this becomes very, very difficult. Correcting a posture by exercise is probably the easiest way than correcting a postural problem with fixed deformity by surgery and that is important to understand. So you must do right things, frequent changes in posture, seating modification, regular exercise, relaxation regimes, lumbar supports if required, and all these things. And avoid the things like sudden lifting or bending, low easy chairs, sleeping on the floor. A lot of people ask me, I don't think that's advisable. The right mattress is correct because the body doesn't know where you're sleeping in the ground or in an elevation. So you must have a firm mattress, not too firm, not too soft so that you don't sink in. And the uh, physical therapy cannot be emphasized and Indian yoga is probably the best because it gives you toning, it gives you flexibility, it gives you agility, and it gives you strength. And you can do them all with weights. So depending on your ability, you can do your own exercise. I come back to this slide again so that you don't miss the non-mechanical spinal causes of back pain. And as, as long as you can understand that the mechanical low back pain, which is 97% of back pain, you can eliminate or prevent a recurrence by just taking precaution and looking after. Now, suppose you are unlucky and you get a disc prolapse. Even then, of the 3% of poor people who get disc prolapse, or 5% of people who get disc prolapse, 90% of the disc prolapse will heal on its own. God has given such good healing mechanisms that 97% of these disc prolapse will heal. So if the disc can bulge, suppose the disc bulges, or the disc protrudes, there are various forms, or the disc's large fragment comes out. So it is... Sometimes people are scared that I have a very big disc prolapse. Not necessarily a big disc prolapse needs surgery. A lot of them can resolve on their own. So it's important that you see the uh, doctor for this and not take your own treatment. As I said, most of the disc prolapse can resolve on their own. However, sometimes when you have neurological deficits, when you have bowel bladder symptoms, when you have weakness, when you have intractable pain, you may need surgery. The treatment for a slip disc or a disc prolapse is rest for pain relief. Rest is not more than three or four days. So there's no role of bed rest. There's no role of traction, only analgesics. And sometimes neurotropic drugs are used. You should avoid muscle relaxants or depressive medications, antidepressants. Steroids have a controversial role, but as one of the, one of the panelists said that you can use them for a short period. So even in spine, we do use them for a very short period, but they should not become regular. There used to be a lot, a lot of role in epidural steroids, but now we give different types of injection, which have got root blocks or facet blocks. Belt, traction, trigger point injection, chiropractor, acupuncture, acupressure, aromatherapy. So all these therapies are of doubtful value. And belt only helps by reducing, bringing your abdomen closer. So you have a conical, you have a cylindrical effect and not a balloon effect. And that's the only way it gives you some support, but that should be only used for a short period. Physiotherapy is very, very important, but it is very important to understand when to do physiotherapy. In acute pain, you can't do physiotherapy and what physiotherapy to do. Most of the physiotherapists seems to be very standard form of treatment like interferential therapy, moist heat, or cold heat, cold packs, or ultrasonic therapy, but they should be modulated according to the requirement. And that's also important to understand. So when you have such a big risk prolapse with bowel bladder symptoms, then you may have to go for surgery. And the surgery is very, very safe. Microscopic surgery these days or endoscopic surgeries, which are more or less keyhole surgeries, and you can go home the same day or the next day. And they are very safe. They are 99% safe. I tell people it is safer to have a spine surgery than to drive around in Delhi. So it's very important to understand that. 
as the disc degenerates you can see that over a period of time the height of the disc is lost and the bones are hitting bones just like you get knee pain you get back pain and arthritis sometimes they may need surgical intervention because the pain becomes too much a lot of times they can be still treated conservatively the condition i spoke about is lumbar canal stenosis which a lot of elderly population will get the spinal canal which is the space available for the spinal cord and the nerve root is needs to be adequate it is 10 mm into 15 mm when that becomes less than 7 mm or 5 mm then the nerves get clumped and there is a venous congestion and then you start getting numbness in your legs and that is important to understand and now in the pandemic people are sitting for too long they are not walking they are not exercising their muscles are wasting away the posture is not correct and so stenosis becomes more and i have seen a lot of new patients recently with lumbar canal stenosis who were managing but are not now managing and it can happen in the neck it can happen in the back so you have to always find out what is the cause so sometimes clumsiness clumsiness loss of balance improper gait becoming slow a lot of this is related to spine but it could also be related to drugs or it could also be related to parkinsonism so the doctor has to find out you cannot find it out so it is very important to seek advice another common problem which i find is osteoporosis which has never been treated so well yet in our indian population something which can be easily treated by just doing a simple scoring frac scoring system there is or doing a bone density and you can know who is at high risk and you should be we should be able to treat them so if rotary is able to create an awareness that would be a great thing to do and in a simple fall or sitting suddenly in a, or slipping in the bathroom you can get uh, osteoporotic fracture which may see you know which may seem innocuous at instantly initially and then gradually go on to compression and sometimes they need some minor surgeries like putting bone cement or uh, which is called kyphoplasty so there are some instabilities or deformities or the spine becomes stilted which is called degenerative scoliosis or spondylolisthesis they may need treatment but i will not focus on that and other treat things which need treatment are where you have weakness or fractures or tumors or infections even in this covid days we take appropriate uh, precautions do a pre operative screening and may, uh, wear the appropriate pp and are doing surgeries so these months we have done about 30 surgeries or previous month we also did the same amount so surgery is safe even in covid era and we take all precautions but that should be done only when required so my take home message is look after your back with correct posture exercise nutrition during lockdown prevent yourself from getting into a disease situation so that you don't have to come to a doctor you can heal yourself don't consult google for your treatment telemedicine is also there and you can use teleconsultation and and a lot of states have started a teleconsultation every, throughout the day which are freely available to a lot of patients understand the red flags and see their advice accordingly advances in spine surgeries are so good now that it allows us to treat almost all conditions with very very good outcome as and when required however it can't be emphasized more that prevention is better than cure and thank you very much for your patient hearing and i know it's very difficult to sit in front of a computer for almost 2 hours now thank you thank you dr